Hello again, everyone. In this video, I'm going to be going over the solutions to the FRQ question number four from AP Classroom. Uh, so the setup for this one is that we have a block of mass M that's attached to a spring, and it is uh, sliding back and forth across this horizontal surface. And we're told that there is uh, some amount of friction between the block and the surface. All right, so uh, the first question we're asked is about the net force on the block uh, when it's uh, in the position shown in this figure up above here. So the block is currently located at x equals 0, and it's traveling to the right. So in the problem description, we're told that x equals 0 is the position where the spring exerts no force on the block in either direction. So that's going to be part of our answer here. We know that the force from the spring equals 0 at this specific location uh, by definition. And then, uh, since there is friction between the block and the surface, we have to consider that as well. So, in this case, the block is moving. It's moving to the right, so there is going to be kinetic friction. And since the block is moving to the right, the kinetic friction is going to be to the left. So, these are the only two forces we have to consider in the horizontal direction. So, the net force is going to be to the left, and that is our answer to part A. Of course, uh, these aren't the only two forces acting on the block. There would, of course, also be gravity pulling it straight down and a normal force from the surface pushing it straight up. Uh, but since the block is not moving in the vertical direction, we know that those two forces must exactly cancel each other out, so they're not going to contribute anything to the net force. All right, so we can move on to part B. So part B gives you this... Uh, figure here of a uh, graph of force versus uh, position. And you're told that this dashed line here represents the force from the spring at different positions. So you can see when the block is at x equals 0, right here, there's no force from the spring. Uh, when x is negative, meaning the block is displaced to the left, we have a positive force. So a positive force must denote uh, a force pushing the block to the right. And then over here, uh, when we have a positive x, that means the block is off to the right, stretching the spring. So the spring is going to pull back and exert a negative force. And we get this linear relationship here, uh, which demonstrates uh, Hooke's law. So if you remember that, uh, force equals minus k times x. That would be the equation of this line, where uh, k, which is the uh, slope, actually negative k, uh, k would uh, represent the spring constant. Okay, so uh, what we're being asked to do is fill in the net force on this graph here. So the net force is going to be the sum of two horizontal forces. There's going to be the spring force, which is the one that's shown in the dashed line, and then there's also going to be the friction force. Okay, so uh, friction will be uh, kinetic friction if the block is moving. And we're told that this graph uh, should represent the net force when the block is moving to the right. So if the block is moving to the right, the friction is going to be kinetic friction. It's going to be to the left, just like we said in part A. Uh, the other thing we need to understand here is that uh, kinetic friction does not depend on speed. Uh, it is a constant. It's equal to uh, mu k, our coefficient of kinetic friction, times the normal force. The normal force on the block is just equal to its weight. That never changes. So this uh, friction force is a constant. So we have a constant force directed to the left. So that means it's negative. So basically what we're doing is adding a constant negative value to the spring force, and what that's going to do is it's going to shift this graph down by some constant amount. So we will just get a graph which is parallel to the dashed line, but lower uh, because we have this constant leftward friction force. Okay, so this is what the graph should look like in part B. Uh, part C just asks us if this graph that we've drawn is consistent with our answer to part A. Uh, part A was just asking us about the net force when x equals 0, so that's what we have to look at. So the graph we just drew 
shows that at x equals zero, we have a negative intercept here, so the force is uh, less than zero. So we can say the net force is less than zero when x equals zero. That's exactly what we said in part A. So yes, the answer is consistent. All right, so there's uh, one final part here. Uh, so part D gives us a new picture. So now it says the block has been displaced to the right and it's come to rest. So V equals zero uh, at the instant shown in this picture. So uh, first thing we're asked is to draw a free body diagram here. So they give you a dot that represents the block and they want you to show all the forces acting on it. All right, so hopefully everybody knows to start with the gravitational force and going straight down. Uh, we're also going to have a normal force in the opposite direction. These two forces should be equal and opposite, so try to draw those roughly the same length. And then uh, we're going to have our two horizontal forces. In this case, the block is not at x equals zero, so there's going to be a force from the spring. The spring is going to be pulling the block back towards the x equals zero position. So the spring is going to pull to the left. And then uh, for the block to uh, remain at rest, uh, there has to be a friction force in the opposite direction. All right, so technically these two forces in the horizontal direction don't necessarily have to be equal. Uh, if the block was going to continue oscillating, then when it comes momentarily to a stop here, the net force actually would not be zero. Uh, if the net force were zero, then since the velocity is also zero, the block would stop moving and remain at rest. Uh, for the block to continue swinging, the friction force would have to be less than the spring force, so the block could start accelerating back in the other direction. So uh, the scoring guide is actually a little unclear on as to whether you're supposed to draw the two horizontal forces equal. Uh, so I think as long as you have both horizontal forces included and in the correct direction, uh, you should be fine for that one. Part two, however, uh, does ask you about uh, the condition for the block to remain at rest. So it asks you uh, to find the maximum displacement you could uh, pull the block off to the right uh, and have it remain at rest. So, you know, if we just pull this block a little bit to the right and then carefully let go, you know, friction could be enough to hold it in place. But if we pull the block back really far, then friction is not going to be enough to keep it from moving. So the question is, how far can we pull this block and let go and have it stay where it is? So for part two, we actually want these two forces here to remain equal to each other. So the first thing we have to do is say that we need the spring force to equal the friction force for the block to remain at rest. Then uh, we have to fill in the uh, relevant equations for these two forces. So the spring force, its magnitude is going to be k times the maximum displacement and the friction force is going to be the maximum possible friction, which is uh, the coefficient of static friction, mu s, times the normal force. And the normal force is mu times mg. So the last thing we have to do here is just solve for x max by dividing both sides by k. So the maximum displacement is going to be mu times mg, that's the maximum friction force, divided by the spring constant k. All right, so that's our answer. If we plug in all of those known values, we'll get a distance, and that means if we pull the block to the side, anything less than this distance here and carefully let go, the block will not move because friction will hold it in place. But if we pull it to the side uh, by some distance greater than this amount and let go, it's going to start swinging. All right, so uh, that should cover everything for this problem. If you still have questions, uh, feel free to send me a message and I'll try to clear that up. All right, thank you so much for watching.